Hello everybody and of course welcome to this short introductory video for Field of Glory 2. My name is Richard York, I'm a huge fan of Field of Glory and Slivering Games. In the next hour, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to give you a short introduction into the fantastic world uh, that Field of Glory 2 is set in. So, you ladies and gentlemen are probably sat here wondering, what is this game? Who makes this game? Who's designed this game? Uh, and is it worth me playing? And I'm going to answer this question very, very soon. So, Field of Glory 2 is a strategy ta tactical game set in the ancient era. So, think you're thinking, what, what kind of what factions have we got here? So, you think of your Romans, you're thinking of your Gauls, your Carthaginians, your Spanish, you know, ranging from uh, the west uh, part of the world all the way to the east. So, you have Arabs, um, uh, Persians and everything in between there. It, it, the game and the content for this game is absolutely huge. So of course this game is published by the uh, amazing Slivering Games, uh, a massive massive developer in the world of RTS strategy games. If you've not checked it out, why don't you click in the button below checking it out. But of course it is designed by the legendary, the, the man himself Richard Bodley Scott. I have actually had the pleasure of playing him in Field of Glory 2 and he is absolutely superb. So when you think about what 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 can I do in this game? What can I do? You could set historically uh, accurate nations fighting each other just as Roman goals, but if you want Want to in Field of Glory 2, you can set a little bit different. You can fight nations that may not ever have met in the world today, to so like some Persians versus some Gauls or uh, British versus some African nations. The choice is yours. If you are, if you enjoy, you know, ancient battles, uh, you know, very deep strategy game, this is certainly the game for you uh, and for your friends if they are into that. So what what can I get? What can I expect um, from Field of Glory 2 as in DLC? The, the content for this game is huge. The base game is huge and the stuff that they've added to the uh, game has just exploded the amount of content and gaming time so when you think about it um the there is a certain time frame that the normal game gives you but also the dlc adds massive massive things so we've got i'm going to shout out a couple of the dlc but you can check it in the store for yourself so we've got wolves at the gate if you like vikings if you like shield wall tactics of hack and slash wolves at the gate dlc is certainly the game for uh, dlc for you we've got rise of persia age of belisaurus legions of triumph immortal Mortal Fire, just a little uh, snippet of the games there. So, you know, the game is, like I said, brought to you by Richard Brody Scott when this was a tabletop game. So think about this. This is actually a physical tabletop game as a war game myself online, but also on the... Um, on the on the tabletop field in real life it is nice to have a game that is actually to the digital side and then it's easy to fight between things so the there's a, so many factions so much like i said please check the um description below so we're gonna have a quick talk about some of the um scenarios and we can do so this game of course you could there's lots of historical battles you can find so we've got the the battle of canai uh zambia and etc etc there's so many of these battles that and the Battle of Watling Street, which I played actually today, which was amazing against the uh, uh, Romans and the British. So this is, of course, a classic turn-based game. It got a very easy uh, interface, uh, but it is hard to master gameplay. So uh, you've got cohort-sized unit. Battles can range from units to 80 per side. Like I said, on the epic battles where it's just huge. You've got name generals such as Caesar, Mark Antony, uh, Hannibal, just some notable generals there um we got a single player but also the legendary play by email system that uh, is so famous from uh, slivering games which really really is good and also the ai is beyond beyond amazing in this game and really worth it so we've got six levels of uh, difficulty ranging from novice to deity and i tell you now ladies and gentlemen be warned if playing on the hardest setting it is no fickle mistress it's very fickle so numerous different organizations combat capabilities tactical doctrines allow to represent of tactical differences and developments throughout the period uh, this game of course is moddable uh, there is lots of mods out there that some absolutely 
brilliant people have developed. I mean, one off the top of my head that I played recently was the zombie mod, and that is something interesting. So, uh, of course, I've mentioned multiplayer, and this is just, um, it just goes ranges on. So, we're going to stop me lollygagging for five minutes. We're going to get into the nitty gritty of Field of Glory 2. So, I sat here thinking, what can I show you to absolutely show the game off to the best? And I thought a classic Roman versus Gaul fight. So, we're sat here in the pits of Germany somewhere between the French and German border trying to deliver a baggage train across the um, wilderness to our supply camp but we have been ambushed we've been stopped by a mighty Gaulic faction trying to raid our baggage train so I won't read the objective just there I'll let you guys just have a quick look at that there so top bottom up we've got 24 turns to deliver um, uh, at least half of our baggage train to our campment to give them vital supplies against the war and our occupation of Gaul. So we're going to click this X here and we're going to have a look at through our units and uh, discuss the uh, tactics that I'm going to do but a couple of the game mechanics uh, as we really enjoy. So a large number of energy troops can be heard approaching from behind and our right flank. So we know we're being outflanked but can we succeed in delivering them supplies? Oh the left flank as well so we're being ca captured from left right and the la and from the rear so as you can see this game like i said is of course uh, turn based and um squared so we know our movement so we're going to have a quick look at our forces as that we arrange them in a battle formation to do to a devastating charge and breakthrough technique so as you can see uh, we have of course these lighter troops to the front so you, you you're saying there richard what are these lighter troops so these lighter troops here are the the skirmish line the melee the appetizer before the uh, main assault on uh, the, the the battle we're about to commence. So, of course, as you can see, we've got some light javelin troops. These troops could be drafted from all over Rome to come and fight for Rome on this battlefield. Your imagination can take you into crazy places. So we've got some light javelin troops. I imagine they're from Numidia, North Africa, which we recruited mercenaries to come and help us uh, fight on this plane of battle today. And also, we have some light horse archers. So think about the this is what's happening here this little bit of a fight before the main battle these troops are here to harass distract throw some spears throw some slings this game brings you know in other nations like some of more of the uh, asian um asian located uh, armies you might get some bomb throwers or more javelin throwers or f or tribal forest fighters the you know it gets ranges are hopefully we'll get to see some more of that in later in the video but today we're going to see this one so as you can see we've got in our little bit of a skirmish line, we have, of course, some light javelin. These here are hard-hitting units to throw and just try and disrupt the enemy line. We've got some very, very fast javelin uh, uh, horse archers that are there to circle, pull away any units. And, of course, to the left side, we have some Numidian horsemen ready to support the Roman brothers in battle. So, we're going to have a look at our mainstay line. Of course, the Romans are not a force to be uh, faced uh, lightly so as you can see we have a mighty legendary the, the, the trumpets of Rome are now um, sounding as we form up for our defence so as you can see we do have a Brutus <laughs> I love these names um, Roman veteran Roman leaders as you can see to the uh, bottom of the screen there you've got a nice little information screen that describes all of your units and what what they do the capabilities so we've got the type which the heavy foot heavy foot are tough fighters they are the guys fully equipped with chain mail shields and swords they are just very heavy they do not like going in rough terrain we'll probably see this in later in this battle if i want to keep these guys in the nice open i don't want to be bogged down in a bog because the heavy heavy armor and the heavy foot of these soldiers will just be dragged down and more likely be just disrupted and then destroyed we don't want that as you can see the quality rome only brings the best and we have an elite soldiers in our force here straight away of course the armor as you can see they are armored to the teeth with shield chain mail they are looking pretty sweet there is it's gonna definitely lessen the impact of any fire that is definitely 
something I would call a point of advantage which I'll be talking about probably as the video goes on and we'll see where that goes of course we've got capabilities impact and swordsman so we've got some good capabilities there good impact means we want the charge we're trying to charge first to give that impact phase to get that cohesion down on the enemy we want to charge in there we were meant for for charging in of like a like a concrete block hitting a glass uh, a glass sheet we want to be charging in here of our room we don't want to be sitting back having a good day we want to be smashing in there and that's what we're going to be doing and swordsman we are trained so we, we, we've got a skill called swordsman this gives us a basic uh, uh, advantage against non-swordsman so we're going to have a look at what else do we have in here so of course we're going to push these to the forward this is, of course, the deployment phase. So where we can actually deploy our forces into any battle formation we think will outsmart and deposition the enemy. So, as you can see, these are highlighted when I click the general. This little flag, meaning this general is in this unit, and that is his what we're called battle group so this is his little cohort he gives advantages so keeping your troops together in this little battle group uh, provides a support bubble and gives you some bonuses of like free movement when you're away from the enemy uh, we'll go into this further so I've got one more general to uh, put down but as you can see he is SG which is a sub-general. He's not the big cheese is the small cheese so we're probably gonna drop our um, main general in somewhere else. So what we're going to do, we're going to push this guy into the center so he's ready to rumble uh, and we'll show you what else we can do. So we've got a, we've got a Roman, I just, I really sh want to put him into a veteran unit but there's that veteran unit there. I wish I could swap, I might try and swap him around so I can put my C and C in there because I think that's what we want to do. So we're going to put that other general behind there and then we're going to put our main cheese, our main commander, our C and C or not our C and C there, we're going to swap him out again. I think we slightly messed up there, but that does not matter. It does not matter. We're here to just have a little bit of a learn. So there we go. That's my sub-general. Oh, no, sorry. I do apologise. I do apologise. My sub my commander, is already already there. So we'll transfer him out if we can again, which I don't think it will let us. That's my fault. I did not see my commander being back there. Silly me. After all these years, I still messed that up. As you can see, my CNC is actually in there. So we'll look at here, uh, and we'll swap these guys back around for that battle group. And there we go. So what we want to do is form little battle groups within our army. Yeah, so the CNC is in his own a command group at the back with the cavalry we'll keep him on his horse i think he likes his horse that's why he won't come out so as you can see we're going to click these this unit here and we're going to assign it with this battle group like i said they give you gives you different uh, bonuses with them so as you can see we're going to have a battle group of roman lineages we're going to have another battle group which we're going to move to the uh, right flank the left side of the screen uh, with the um other troops here. Uh, that's there we go. So there we go. We've got our second battle group. Of course, not all Romans are uh, really good fighters. You've got to have, unfortunately, some lesser Ro not lesser Romans, but not as trained. As you can see, they are heavy foot, unmaneuverable, raw, protected. So as you can see, they're not as good as the Roman legendaries. I think we can. Can we skip? Can we skip him out? Yes, we can. We can actually put our sub general in a uh, commander in everything. And I think we are going to do that. We are going to do. I'm going to take him out of the cavalry unit. Get off your pompous horse, Mr. General. Get off your horse. So, Mamilius, so he is our CNC. Who we got, are going to have on this right, left side, right, right flank? So, we're going to keep our cavalry behind there because they're in their own little command group without a general. We could swap him around. As I said, you can keep swapping stuff around as much as you like to try and get that best combination of a general there. But we're going to have our CNC on the front line to give the get him right into the the midst there so these guys are going to be in their own little battle group so as you can see our mission is of course to take the uh train the back the train out of the woods here so we need to get out of uh, the end of the woods away from these rope these goals which are going to think so we need to move all of these um uh, baggage trains which unfortunately are not very good at attacking they are there just to give them goods to the uh, supply camp so we've got a, a really strong coherent battle line here as i said i've tried to divvy them up into the battle groups to give them the best support from their general our cnc i think i'm going to move it to the center he is in that veteran unit that elite unit which is going to really 
push hard into the goals. So, like I said, the game's fought over 24 turns, and we're about to end deployment here. So, the forces have been selected for us. Uh, in other modes, we are able to actually select our own forces uh, uh, and choose whatever we want more. But we'll come. We'll probably choose after we do this little game. We'll come go back to that. Like I said, any questions, drop them in the chat because I think I am going to be there to answer them. So there we go. There we go. And let's have a look. It's a mighty. We'll have a look at the terrain. You say to me, Richard, what does this terrain do? So as you can see, we've got we've got hills, hills here. These are different hills give different height and they give different advantages. So the high in in plain simple simply real it's simple. The higher you are, the more points of advantage you have. So if you're fighting uphill, you're at a disadvantage. You're fighting downhill, you're at an advantage. As you see, rough terrain. As I spoke about heavy foot in this uh, in the deployment, heavy foot don't like rough terrain. If I was to place a unit here, you'd see my unit becomes moderately disordered. This meaning they're not fine as effective as they would do uh, in the open. So what we're doing there is literally reducing our combat effectiveness against anything we're attacking. But as a, a medium troops, anybody who is not heavy foot, like a medium troop, could fight in that rough terrain. So there's a, this is a tactic there. If you have medium troops against heavy foot, Fight in the rough terrain, so slight bit of tactics there, and probably plays more when you're playing a human opponent. So, we're gonna, I think that's all we need to look. As you can see, there is a built up area which does exactly the same. So, if we had a rough, we had a heavy foot unit in there, it would not be fighting as effective. So, I'm gonna be talking about cohesion, points of advantage all through this. Any questions, just drop them below. Uh, but also, just check the game out, check some videos online because you will really get into it and really enjoy it. So, let's get. Let's get on with this. So we're going to end the turn. As you can see to the top left, we have, of course, well, you can't see this because I'm actually blocking this. Uh, there is, of course, the percentages on the top left, which I'm blocking with my camera, I know, um, which gives us if we're going to break. So we're just going to cut the end turn. We're going to see what the mighty goals have brought. And as you see on the top left side, oh, there is some uh, goals attacking us from the uh, right side. As you can see, we've got a little bit of mini-map to the right. So, uh, as you can see, the top left is covered in darkness. This is meaning it's out of our point of view. So, we need to think about exploring that and getting that front. So, as you can see, to the right side, we've been ambushed by the despicable dirty rowdy goals that have come to raid the mead raid our wine supply from italy to supply our uh, ferocious troops in that encampment so as you can see the mighty warband have come to try and stop us so as you can see we would look to that little card at the bottom that explain what the units do so this is just a warband unit a bunch of rowdy goals not trained just a rabble of men you know there to just a charge forward attack me with all the ferocious they don't care about order but they they've got some order but not as much order as these romans so as you can see they're undrilled they've not been to training school uh, school like me uh, they are heavy foot the quality it's not as good as the romans but it's still good it's, it's still good. It affects dice rolls and, of course, negatives when you're in combat. Uh, as we just talked about POAs uh, uh, a few minutes ago, POA is a point of advantage. Just to let you know, uh, a trained soldier would, of course, be have an advantage over untrained soldier as an average trained down there. So I have a point of advantage there, and we'll see that in the combat. Of course, these goals, they don't have armor. They've got cloth, they've got a bit of leather, a little bit of hide on the back, but they're not armoured, they're a bit weaker. Mm, it's not going to be good for them. Of course, they are impact, they like the charge, like the Roman legions. They are swordsmen, so they've had some training, some fighting in Gaul, maybe against their other tribes, and they are slightly more experienced. They are, of course, steady at the moment, they're not being affected by any terrain modifiers. They are full, uh, they are full strength, uh, and their command range has been reduced because they have no commander around them. So, oh... It's going to be interesting that to the right, and of course here to the right, further right, we have some noble Gaul cavalry ready to stricken and pillage that train from behind. They are of course infantry, their uh, cavalry. Uh, they are superior. They have had some training. They, they they've been uh, you know promoted from running around on the foot to on the horse. They are protected. They have some light spears on their cavalry, and of course, like I said, trained. They are swordsmen as well. So. 
and of course they are they are faster than the infantry. They could be on me like a like a like a flea on a dog. So we're going to think we're going to have to turn some cavalry around to actually help us. So I think we're going to turn the cavalry battle group to the right side. But I think a veteran Roman general is going to go heroically turn around to defend against him here. And I think. Uh, of course, uh, CNC is going to take the hit on the, the, the hit on the nose and he's going to support the rear. So as you can see there, uh, we didn't take any AP penalty for turning around. This is because we're in our battle group. We're supported by our general. In one foul uh, you know, shout, the uh, half of our battle group turns around and, and stamps their feet, looking at the, now the warband charging down the road. So there we go. We've now... Uh, poured a portion of our army to defend why the rest of our uh, you know brave uh, brave armament push forward so we know we know we need, what we need to do now we need to push forward to the left side to open up and have a look what is across the mighty field so we've now opened up the match to see what is on whoa we got some more warband we've got some poorly armed rabble which are not fantastic but in the right hand could be devastating so we're going to pull this guy pull these next two horsemen forward to uncover more warband ready to try and stop us you know this is going to be interesting we've got a, a mighty hill here to get up to but the question is can we actually get up there before the goals get on this hill and block me while their reinforcements flank out flank me and things so here we go we're going to move. As you can see, uh, when you are so far away from the enemy, uh, rather than having to select every single unit and move forward, you are to do, you're able to do a group move. So we'll move the single moves, what we're going to do so far. As you can see, to do a group move, it's going to move the whole command. Everybody is going to move the, the general shouting, forward! And everybody's going to move forward. And there we go. Everybody chucking forward, ready to attack the Gauls. And I'm just going to have a look around. And, that, and that's literally... All our movements, all I can do right now, apart from end the turn. As you can see, my AP points are very low. It takes four AP points uh, to move one one hex. So this game is, of course, four on hex. There's individual hex. You can take these off as much as you like, which is good. But you know there's invisible squares all over. And I love that kind of game, and that, that kind of real-life for a tabletop game too of course a digital game is brilliant so there we go we're going to end that turn and then we're going to watch uh, in horror as the hordes of goals come to get us oh there's a lot there but they are not trained <sighs> oh so through the mist and the wood at our right flank, some j uh, enemy javelin troops unfortunately have pushed through, which is a little bit of a disadvantage for me here. Uh, so what's going to happen here? They are going to run forward and pepper my poor cavalryman with uh, a, a javelin. So we're going to move the cavalry unit up, which is a slight disadvantage, unfortunately, to the... Um to the noble cavalry because of their training so that will be i'm at a disadvantage but i don't care about my losses here folks it's all about trying to get my roman legions and my baggage train across the way so yet again we are going to advance forward forward for the glory of rome and down with the evil gaul trying to stop us here we're trying to bring civilization to these uh, uncultured uncivilized faction of the world Okay, everybody is now pushing forward, and of course we're going to push the javelin troops forward to get the advantage of this rough terrain. So, like I said, there is a, a little bit of a lull before the battle happens here. We're going to move forward with our uh, cavalry, and we're going to unleash a volley. I say a volley of archer fire here. So now, as you can see, we've moved our unit up. I'm pressing the... Um, Oh, the number one key we actually see the range so every of course cavalry unit every missile unit has a range so as you can see we're going to open up like i can say there's a general in there so i think we're going to try and shoot or try to lessen the effectiveness of this unit so unfortunately it's not going to be the most um the most uh what's the word devastating blow but every little count as you can see um we're just going to do it we're just going to do it and there you go 12 men taking off their str uh, their strength point that unit is only ever so, so slightly weak now but we still got to be careful these units are fragile fragile if they get caught in the open or if they can't evade off on foot they will get absolutely destroyed by these huge warband units remember there are more warband units coming behind my army to the right and to the left so 
We're, of course, now going to advance forward with the Roman veterans to stop these Gauls coming over. We've got to make sure we don't get flanked. One thing we don't want to happen in Field of Glory, you protect your flanks to the left and right. Being charged in the flanks or the rear will lessen your cohesion. You'll be disordered and more likely break. So you've got to make sure everything is protected by other troops. So I'm not going to advance this cavalry unit forward just yet. Unfortunately, I feel this uh, unit of uh, javelin troops will just utterly destroy me. So we're going to end the turn right there. Oh, the computer's thinking about it. He's moved, he's, he's, he's started the little light fight. The cavalry bravely charging forward and the goal is coming directly towards me. We're going to see a clash of sword shield here. It's, oh, it's going to, it's going to be painful, but I feel the training for the glory of Rome will also protect us. So there we go. We're going to have a look. So you can see there's a strange icon that's appeared underneath the uh, wall band unit, meaning we're in combat range. Oh, it's it's going to be bloody. So what we're going to do, we're going to have a look at what what what's going to happen. What happens when you get in combat? Do you just shake hands? No, you don't. You, you, you destroy your opponent. But of course, there is something called POA and points of advantage, which I talked about in the start of the video. So... Everything in this game is connected. You know, uh, of course, your impact, troop quality, if there's a general in that unit. Uh, and, of course, the enemy will have their points of advantage. <coughs> Excuse me. So, as you can see here, our Roman uh, le legionnaires have impact, which gives them a plus 200 bonus. And then the troop quality, which, of course, elite, gives us more bonuses. And the general gives us even more bonus. So, as you can see, our bonuses keep knocking up there and give us modifiers. I won't go too into detail because it, I don't want it to bog you down with the uh, mechanics of the game behind the scenes. It's something you will learn. <coughs> so as you can see, it will give us a percentage. So at the moment in time, there is a phase called the impact phase. The phase where sword, shield and armour impact and just hit against each other in a, in a just a mass of men and, you know, just that first push in so we've got a 64 percent chance of winning here not every win will result in a cohesion check where you'll drop and we'll explain this in a second when this charges in and of course we've got always an option to be drawing with the air opponent which is 35 percent and we've got zero loss we are meant to this we were born to fight so as you can see even in the melee phase we have a 77 percent chance of winning a 24 percent chance of drawing and zero of losing so remember as you can see, the veteran Roman legionnaires are heavy foot. He's heavy foot. I'm elite. He's average. So we got we got the quality, we've got the armor, uh, we've got the uh, very much similar capacity uh, capabilities even. So we're going to charge forward, or at least a devastating charge against these uncivilized brutes. So. In the in the first charge of the game, uh, we won. Our result was a win for the Romans. But amazingly, the, um, the despite the perilous situation these Gauls were set in, they rallied together and went, whoa, we've been knocked back, but we are fine. We're going to fight on. We are not being taken down by these Roman scum. We are going to hold back. The enemy unit falls back, not in disarray, but in order. And this is going to really... Unfortunately, this is not going to help me. I would have rather they died here, but... That's just the way the cookie crumbles in Field of Glory 2. It's going to roll you some curveballs. It's going to roll some good rolls, bad rolls. you just got to take it on there. So, we're going to click that next thing. So now, this unit is locked in deadly melee for the rest of the game until one of us breaks and is fled back to their homeland. So, we now... Like I said before, we need to support this unit. This unit now is just going to stay there hacking away. Cavalry to the right. There's more infantry coming up behind. We need to push forward. We're going to push forward. We're going to push the not-so-trained Roman raw legionaries to fight for their brothers in arms. Of course, the Roman general here is going to push to the right, providing this flank. So, something I've not talked about yet, which I will talk about. It's called um, POA. Point, oh, sorry, POA. The zone of control. The zone of control is a position in front of every unit that blocks you from doing anything. So as you can see, two lines have happened here. I mean, this unit controls these two zones. This stops you from running away. Uh, so once you're locked into a kind of 
position in front of the unit. You can't move. You have to stay there. So what we're going to do, we're going to advance the cavalry up. Oh, no, we're not. And we've made a vital error here straight away. And this game uh, does give you an undo function. But as I've just... Uh, revealed a hidden unit I can't move back I'm stuck there I moved into some rough terrain so these cavalry unit has advanced onto a rough ground which has made them moderately disordered they're not gonna fight as well now so we're gonna have to advance another unit to support them here and um, that's it we've, we've, we're fine now so as I said I can undo a move so you make a mistake if you're a glory to it gives you a nice little function to end it so as you can see we're now locked uh, in their zone of control they're stuck, I'm stuck, but within this, uh, some units in Field of Glory 2 can evade, and the cavalry will evade if it finds itself in a disadvantaged situation. So, we'll see what happens in the next turn if he charges. Of course, we're going to go back to our main line, we're going to be advancing the baggage train, we need to get on top of this hill. If the Gauls were, were to be on top of this hill, it would be a bloody fight for the Romans. So we're going to keep pushing. And I might do a little bit of a trick, tricksy tactics. As we know, I'm going to move a general. So a general can move around in his own battle group. So just in case this unit couldn't do anything uh, particularly well, I can move my general to a safer position. I think he's going to get destroyed. So yet again, we are going to try and provide some harassing fire towards the um, units here. Like we said before, everything in Field of Glory has its advantages, disadvantages, the effective shots. So you want to get the most effective uh, shots at the same time. So we're going to shoot here, firing a devastating blow. Well, that's devastating. It was it was pretty good. Devastating blow against the Gauls there. And we're going to quick run forward of our lighter troops. We've got to be careful. We don't want to get captured and shot up or captured here. There we go. And that's everything. We've moved forward. We've engaged the uh, outflanking um, Gauls to the rear. Just got to end that turn. Remember, turns are going down. We've got to keep going. So what do they do? So we've got more advancing uh, Gauls to the left. And here come the Gauls against my Royal injuries. So as you can see, the Close Order Warband have an advantage against our Royal injuries here. Okay. As you can see, the Romans now being peppered by uh, the Javelin troops. Oh, and this is it's happened. We've got the advantage. As you can see, uh, the combat was fought uh, with the warband against the veteran Romans, which, like I said before, are very, very good. And as you can see, we did win that combat. And as you can see on the right side here, this unit has become disrupted. You say, Richard, what's disrupted? Cohesion. This game's about cohesion. You have a couple of levels of cohesion. So you're at normal stance. You have disordered. This unit has become disordered. It's not in a good place at the moment. It's It's been hit a couple of times. A couple of soldiers have died. They've become a little bit distracted. Uh, they're not going to fight as effectively. So we have underneath disrupted. We have fragmented. This is the time where your, your, your unit is about to break. Um, fragmented is not a place to be. You are reduced movement. You can't charge. At a whim, your troops will break and flee the battlefield. You don't want to be disrupted. You don't want to be fragmented. And after fragmented, you have routing. The, la the, the worst place you can be, running to the hills, running back to your homeland. So we're going to click there, Let's see what happens. So here we are. We fought well. The Romans have been trained well here. So we're looking at our general, our veteran Roman general. We're we're in Photo Glory 2. You, when it's your turn, you can decide what combat you fight in what order. So when you think about it, you want to fight your most advantaged combat first. The best combat you can fight, you fight first. Because it can affect the entire game or a side of a flank. So, his cavalry didn't charge in, which was surprising. So, we're going to look here. As you can see, we, we, there's no impact phase. We've not charged in like we did in the first phase. This is the melee phase. As you can see, we are very, very... We're, we're, our points of advantage are massive. Him being disrupted is just another added extra to us. So his disruption is given as a minus 26% uh, edit modifier. You can change these modifiers, of course, by adding extra units to combat. So if you've got multiple units attacking one unit, that's another way to defeat and crush your enemy. So, of course, this is, of course, the combat we need to fight first. I'm hoping we're going to fragment them and you can see that uh, mechanic in the game. So... The warband are made of tougher stuff than I expected. That was like an 8% chance of them uh, being indecisive 
but the enemy was still cut down. 14 men slain on the floor and 10 of mine. But my one of my men is worth 10 of them. So <clears throat> we go to look at the raw Lindris, which unfortunately these aren't as good. As you can see, the warband have definitely the advantage here. You know, we are we are swordsmen. We got as we are said, we are raw. We're we're fresh out of boot camp. We've been brought from the field. We've had a couple of days, months training, but we're not like we're not a Roman Lindris just yet. We're not top dog. We're we're a bit we're a bit rubbish, unfortunately. As you can see, the enemy enemy have a bonus because of their quality so we're going to try and attack them we've got a 10 a six percent chance of winning i'll be very surprised this matchup is going to help us but fortune favors the bold in field of glory so by the look of the gods that prayed to mars today we it was indecisive but the raw uh, are slightly disadvantaged against the enemy ward or, or war band. It is still even Stevens. I'm still unsure. So we've got to help that unit out on the left. It's only a matter of time for the war band to destroy us. But the, the veteran unit the Roman there is doing pretty well. So we're going to charge forward. As you said before, combat has impact phase if you charge and then the melee commences. We could, if we wanted to, try and chase down these light javelin men. But remember, we're here to protect the baggage train. These javelin troops could harass the baggage train, but we're fine to charge forward here. So forward for the glory of Rome. Wow, the, the, the mass of Roman soldiers pushing forward there to destroy the uh, Roman, uh, the enemy warband. So by the look, we disrupted them, which has put us on a pretty good foot for that flank. The warband have bitten off a little bit more they can chew there really happy with that so we've got to look at the cavalry which is not so good we're at a bit we've, we've opened our flank up here really this one unit of noble cavalry is a bit is a bit better than us it's got more training it's protected but we are armored but as you can see there is different poas here light spear troop quality i am of course moderately disordered because i uh, it's a good pure example for you, but also bad gameplay for me here to deploy to push my cavalry there. But there is a function called fall back. So if I didn't want to be there anymore and wanted to try and move around, I could try and call call a, a general step back from my troop. But as we are so close to the enemy, we've got our eyes fixed on the enemy in the field. Falling back will take a cohesion check. This is a test to make sure your guy, your your warriors don't become disordered and go, oh, why are we walking back? So we're going to try it just for this guy, ladies and gentlemen. So we passed our cohesion check. We hold firm. We, we pushed ourselves out of this rough terrain. This will hopefully give us time to turn around and come and attack these javelin men. So we are locked in here against, of course, the cavalry. Um... Of course, this one move back has taken all of our action points away from us. So we can't do anything now. We are stuck completely uh, there until next turn till we can do anything. So we're just about done on this right side. Oh, I missed. Look, what did I miss? I missed more reinforcements. We've got some slingers, light archers, and some poorly armed rebel coming to fight us. Of course, more noble cavalry with a general with a very complicated name that I'm not going to try and pronounce, but that sub-general adding the extra fight value towards that cavalry unit. And, of course, the brave rabble from the hometown coming to fight us. So here we are to the centre again. We've got to push forward. We've got to get the, the advantage of this hill right here. The enemy are closing in left and right. Let's just keep pushing forward. As you can see, we've become severely disordered in this, this rough terrain. We've got to get out of it. If the Gauls were to attack us now, it would be lambs to the slaughter for us. So keep pushing, fellow Romans. Keep pushing. Defend that baggage train for, for all of your lives. We need to supply a uh, settlement with some wine and armaments to help them fight and uh, you know subject the Gauls to our empire. So yet again, they're not engaging me. So I'm going to just continue to shoot them up. And now we have the javelin men ready to crack their morale. Oh, so as you saw, a single man of the uh, of the unit fall down. I mean, they've lost enough to lose a base. So that unit is constantly being 
chipped away so this unit is not really going to be at full strength so we've just got to keep hammering so a, a top tip for field of glory 2 when you are fighting or shooting any armaments at anybody remember you want to be hitting one unit concentrating fire to knock down the morale because after a while they will take cohesion checks and hopefully drop to disordered like we discussed before become disrupted fragmented and then route back to your homeland so i think we are all done i do not want to charge this cavalry unit because it will not end well for me they have the advantage advantage of being uh, of course superior to me as you can see the combat is not great the impact is really bad we've bitten off more than we can chew with the uh, famous Gaulic cavalry we're going to end the turn 19 turns left anything can happen here right now and the Gauls are coming they're charging they've broken their ranks they they don't want to be shot up anymore but they're trying to come from us on the left side we've got more warband coming from the trees in the midst maybe they're hiding there waiting for us to push forward we've also got javelin troops harassing our cavalry oh no we've been disrupted for the poor cavalry oh and they're attacking our, leg our Royal Legions, which have been pushed back. As I said before, the Royal Legions are not well-trained troops. They are there just to bolster the numbers. They may have just been a supporting force, but I've had to use them as a fighting frontline force, which is not great. So, the, um, luckily, but unfortunately, I got pushed back. You see, pushback works in two ways. It could pu push me back to a better position on my line, or it could really help him. So, here we are yet again. Oh! <gasps> So, the brave soldiers of the Republic have broken the warband. So, as I talked about cohesion levels, you've got your normal cohesion, you've got disrupted, then fragmented, then broken. So, remember, he's gone from disrupted to fragmented to broken. He's not dropped one level of cohesion to two levels. Now, the enemy warband has broken splash to the four winds he's out of there he does not want to fight these troops so what's going to happen now everybody within one hex of that unit is going to take a cohesion check so just imagine you've seen your friends to the left or to the right destroyed what are you going to do you're going to panic let's see if anybody else you know follows them and tries to retreat oh wow the god of mars smiles on the Roman faction today. The Roman unit fighting the law raw legions to the uh, north there looked at their fellow warband flee across the field and they start to panic. They've lost a level of cohesion but also the Romans fighting the veterans were no match for the glory of Rome as I would like to say and lose two levels of cohesion. It is a good day for Rome. It is a good day. But, unfortunately, we've had a bit of a trade-off here. Like I spoke about the light harassing troops at the start of the game. It's a separate combat, I believe. All this light, all this, these lights are really good at breaking the cohesion. And, unfortunately, our cavalry have been stuck out in the open. They've been, they've been, they've got men throwing sticks, stones, everything at them, and now they've just, they're not fighting as effective. I was, if I was to charge the cavalry unit to the right, that disruption has not helped, and now we are just, we, we, we're in trouble here. We're going to have to do something drastic to stop this. But as you can see, the two warbands there have broken, fled. They don't want to fight it, and so what we need to do here is turn to face. As we know, the Roman warband uh, is fighting them uh, sorry the Roman law Royal Indians even so this has changed up a little bit into our advantage I mean I would say a lot into our advantage as the um, as the Roman the warband is now disrupted it's not it's not fine as co coherent as it should be cohesion it doesn't have the cohesion it did before um, of course they are disrupted they are not fighting well our Roman legionaries have the upper hand even though they're lesser quality so what we're going to do we are going to turn and face the side a flank attack can be devastating for either receiver or the taker or oh, so we're there and we're gonna just in case it doesn't go well we're gonna support them with a veteran unit so we're gonna fight this combat first as they disrupted like we said we are now back into an advantage situation where even a poorly armed troop has the advantage against a disorderly trained troop we're gonna fight what happens to the glory of rome so even with the glory of Rome behind us, it was a indecisive combat. Uh, 
quality did not outweigh the disruption or his quality. So he, even the disrupted thing, this is why we've turned. I will show you the flank attack next turn. So as we know, the javelin troops are fighting it as we are going to turn to to try and charge down these um, oh, awfully good shots. So here we're just going to sit pretty, but unfortunately we have a We've got some cavalry coming to attack our rear, but I think we're safe for now. So, here we are on the midst of Warband versus Legionary. Well, as you can see, what happened to my cavalry to the left? As I said, light troops will evade uh, when charged, but they are that quick. They are going to come back to the field and fire again. Of course, we are now going to advance our Roman legionaries forward to defend our baggage train. As you can see, there's kind of an opening on the right side. We need to take advantage of that. So, pushing forward here. Keep going, lads. Keep going. We've got to push forward as quickly as possible. So, we're going to push forward, hopefully, to destroy these dastardly Gauls. As you can see, they do have their own general themselves ready to attack the hill. Remember, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, it is the POAs we need. Okay, advancing forward, we are going to push the baggage train to the right if possible. But these are unmanoeuvrable and a train, so may we just get them across half of the field. And off we go, lads. Okay, so we are now yet again going to fire, fire for the, uh, fire some light archer shots at the uh, warband. So, there we go with the last volley of fire. It's done. Okay, to the next turn. Oh, the untrained Gauls are now charging across the field in a ferocious body of men trying to attack us. And more light troops from the left side, unfortunately, are coming to stop our relief column. We're in trouble. The the Gauls are gaining momentum, and oh no, calamity! The um, Gaulic cavalry charged our cavalry, but he has managed to evade. And the royal leaders have holded the field. So, of course. It is back to the combat with the Royal Leaders. So we're going to show you a little bit of a feature of Field of Glory 2, which is flanking. Flanking will drop cohesion. So imagine being charged from the side with a mighty rush of men in armour, with shields and stabby sticks. As you can see, 99%. We are going to really hurt these uh, rope, these uh, goals. Have a go. Oh, as you can see, the unit went from disordered, fragmented, and then, of course, to broken. They have gone. They do not want to fight the trained Roman soldiers. So, what we're going to do here now is we're not going to activate this unit just yet. Because what could happen is a little thing in Field of Glory 2 where you can try and catch some fleeing troops. So, we're going to charge. Evade. No. Unfortunately, they fled the wrong way. As you can see, our cavalry went sword swinging, trying to attack the uh, uh, javelin troops. So we're going to turn around here, and s hopefully we're going to catch some of these units off guard. So we're going to go back to here. We have only one thing to do with this cavalry unit, and that is flee. Unfortunately, the Gore cavalry will absolutely hurt us. So we're in an unfortunate position now on our front line. The, the goals are here in numbers we cannot hold against. Okay, we're going to first fire away our shots. Firing javelin, bow, anything we possibly can at them. So we're going to move these javelin troops to the centre. The Numidian allies are going to help us in the midst of battle. Okay, so like I said before in the video, we were moving our general across to where he's needed most, on the front line. If you put your general on the front line, you've got to prepare for him to die as well. He is put himself in harm's way. So we're going to pour our sub-general to the front rank. This is going to give him an advantage in the uh, midst of combat. And I will show you this. So having that sub-general in here will give me a plus 50 on the combat res. So we're talking about POA point of advantage remember you want that point you want it to be high thing so we are going to charge down for the glory of rome for victory or defeat so 
what we need to do now is to make sure we are not going to get flanked. So we're going to engage this unit here, hopefully destroy them and send them back in. But unfortunately, they do not want to flee. And then we're going to pull the Romans forward forward again why the baggage train tries to escape the, remember these guys pulling this train are they got heavy ox uh, heavy co containers they are trying as fast as they can to pull it away but can only move two spaces per turn and that's our turn done we're just getting through these turns so quickly i'm hoping you guys are enjoying this game just as much as me in my descriptions any questions drop them in there and we'll answer them for you but as you can well you can't see the top left of my score we are currently 19 percent ahead of them we've not lost anything yet i say yet um but we're hopefully gonna keep pushing as you can see the light troops harassing my cavalry and my infantry there's nothing i can do there apart from just literally just try and kill them and try and protect our flanks Oh, they lost, but the goals are made of high, uh, more stuff than that. So, we're going to try a charge here. Let's see what the impact phase brings. And slight disadvantage. Oh, okay, we're going to go. We're going to attack. Oh, that's not good at all. As you can see, there's a, is a this commander, Saras, son of Citruses, or however you pronounce that. The uh, Of course, the they've got their general. They're ready to hit us. But we've got a choice here. We've got two units to attack. Do we attack the general unit or the poorly armed rabble? But if we were to push down here, we would be in a bad position and they would be able to flank us, which we do not want to do. So we're going to try and fight some of these combat first and see if we can beat the goals down. Nope. 61%. Disrupted. And we are pushed down. <sighs> like I said, uh, pushbacks and push forwards are literally... A win or loss. Sometimes they can put you into a better position, but also a negative position. It's made me slightly exposed there towards the Gallic infantry. Okay, we are going to run this infantry cavalry out of the way because it is useless at the moment in time. We're going to push forward here and we are going to go for a second charge. Trying to break them. And our horse-drawn carriages are going to go quickly as they can out of the way. Okay, for the glory of Rome, Rome need just it's honor, honor or death. Okay, so what we're going to do now, we're going to turn around to face the rest of this a horde of Gauls trying to get us. As you can see, as you can see now, we are now locked in their zone of control. As you can see, these little dotted lines, meaning they're focused on us, and we can't particularly do much apart from try to move out of that. Oh, and we managed just to sneak out of it. And I think, unfortunately, we are still in their line of sight. Meaning they would be able to charge us and hopefully our units will flee. So, yet again, we are going to charge, try to charge the light troops. Do we catch them? <coughs> no, we don't. The skirmish troops managed to escape. Only just, because otherwise that would have been a very, very good charge. Okay, so the, the battle lines have been drawn. Combat will now ensue. As you said, the routing troops can rally. There is a, a very small chance that all of the routing troops could rally if close to a general. Oh, we've seen some more reinforcements coming to attack. And there's the charge. Oh, calamity for the Roman cavalry. An indecisive combat there, which is good. I'm happy with that combat. Oh, they held firm. They can hear the call of the general. Oh, oh, we're in a little bit of trouble. We've been outnumbered. We've been outmatched by the numerous enemies here. Okay, so the, the battle has commenced. Men, shield, are screaming die to their enemies <clears throat> so as you can see we are in a very poor position we've got a bit muddled up at the moment in time but i feel remember the mission it's not it's to hold hold until relieved so we are just going to push our horse carriages out the way we need them supplies there men it's the men aren't the problem it's of course the supplies so as you can see we are now able to charge the rabble but 
cohesion is only dropped when you're when you flank when you engage uh, already engaged unit so this is why this will not drop them but they will probably die horrendously because they are poorly armed rubble and the poorly armed rabble dropped to disordered because of the well training of the Romans. <sighs> okay, so we're going to have to shoot this unit up here because we are going to get flanked very badly. But you will see soon why the Romans are good. Okay, so we're going to try this engagement again. Indecisive. We're going to try this combat here. Roughly equal. So the training of the Romans, but also the general of the enemy brings that training of the POAs to an equal match. Of course, the last combat here, 55, we should beat them. Oh, no, we don't. The Gauls, the, they've pulled the Romans into a trap here more than anything. Okay, so now these light troops are really close. We're going to charge forward. And, <coughs> unfortunately for the Ro uh, Gaulic Slingers, they did not run away. Every time a unit evades, it has a chance to fail and, of course, um, get caught. So... We advance forward. We're going to try another charge. It's probably not going to work, but it didn't. Oh, unfortunate there. So we're going to try again for the light troops. Do we get them? Unfortunately not. They just retreat enough there. We're going to do a little bit of a scouting party over the hill, just in case there were any Gaul units in there. So let's click there. Lots of fleeing Gauls there, ready to hopefully not rally. And here's the flank attack I'm talking about. We've been bamboozled. But, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, the Romans are built for combat. They've trained for years uh, under the uh, command of historic generals like Julius Caesar, Mark Antony, and Brutus. Uh, we I don't think we got disrupted. Yes, we did get disrupted, but we're still fighting strong. Oh, the Gauls are taking the field, but we are, we are, oh, there is a superior warband in that left side, ready to try to get us up here, but it, it might be all over before then. Okay, that was indecisive. Indecisive. Oh, calamity for the Gauls there. The poorly armed rabble. Back, they're, they're not liking that. Disruption. Fragmentation. Okay, Do, can we finish these off before the end of this uh, the end of this hour? Let's see. So we're gonna run our baggage train as quickly as possible off the board. Of course, like I said in Field of Glory 2, fight the most advantage combat first. So our best combat here is here. No, we don't break them. Oh, we're gonna help the charge here. 56%, 58, oh, no. Fragmentation, the goals have bitten more off they can chew. And as you can see, the Romans, even with the training for years, they are now at a massive disadvantage because the POA, the point of advantage on the hill. Calamity, but with the elite training and the superior training, they hold firm. Of course, we're going to try and hunt these light troops again. Come on, we've got to get them. And they, 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 their luck ran out. We caught them in the open, dispatched them all because they were throwing lots of stones. So we are going to charge forward here against the cavalry. The cavalry evades, but he gets out of the way. So we're just going to keep pushing forwards. For Rome, we are trying to delay the uh, troops from pushing forward. As you can see, there is a superior warband, a more elite unit of the um, uh, goal unit there. So, let's see if this ends the game. Do we have enough to win the game here? This could be all over for the goals. I'm, I'm sensing it will be. Holding firm, the Gauls are, are, are warmed up, ready to fight. Even the um, the C and C's unit is still fighting strong, and amazingly, they hold firm. Back to Gaul with yeah, they're broken. Fantastic, and the light troops to the right side have now broken back, and the Romans rally, fight again, sons of Rome. Broken. 
Okay, we are now going to charge the cavalry. It will evade off the board. And both units run away from the mighty Roman Empire. Okay, what we're going to do is end the turn here. Because this could be game. <coughs> Unfortunately, the Romans getting disrupted again. Oh, there goes their CNC. Disorder. The Gauls are now disappearing into the nightlife. They are not happy. And we are victorious. So, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, we're going to have a quick look at the field. This has been an hour of uh, introduction to Field of Glory 2. I hope you've enjoyed the Gaul and Roman fight. Remember to go and find Slivering Games on YouTube and, of course, the Steam Store. And, of course, I, myself, Mr. Richard York, will see you on another battlefield. And... Salutations, Romans.